Hello, Maya 2022 has been a huge drop for Autodesk and the animation features are really, really cool. I'm a big fan and I'm going to showcase to you guys in this video my favorite feature, which is the ghosting editor. I hope you guys are ready. Let's get started with this episode. <laughs> So welcome to episode number five of season two of Animation Power Tips. This series is sponsored by Autodesk. Many thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring the series. Now, I've done a video previously here in this channel talking specifically about the top five features for Maya 2022 for all animators out there. So we had a specific question by Jean, uh, once a subscriber and also a student of mine, uh, specifically asking for one of those features. Take it away, Jean. Hi, Mr. Newman. I'm currently on my trip to Niagara Falls, and it's like a gift to you. And I want to ask about Maya's ghosting editor. So, in Maya 2022, and ghosting editor is a very important upgrade in animation. And I want to know uh, what will you use in, in your workflow? since we mostly use motion trail to track the body path movement and what's the difference between ghosting editor and motion trail and will you use the ghosting editor to like show your every keyframes pose of the whole the character and I want to know if there's any interesting thing that we can do by using Ghosting Editor when you make an animation. Thank you. So thank you very much, Yeah, Ghosting Editor is an incredible tool that I really enjoy for my 2022. And I'm gonna show you guys how I use it and how some of the features are gonna be super useful for all animators out there. Doesn't matter if you hand key or you edit mocap when you use Maya. So let's get to it. As you can see here, my scene is incredibly bare bones and I only have a sphere for all of you. Now this is on purpose so you can actually understand the basics of this ghosting editor tool. But in a second, I will show you how it looks or how to use it in an actual character so you can connect the dots between the two. So um, I just like three keys and I have the sphere moving from one side to the other and the reason why is so you guys can actually see um, some keys here in a second. So your ghosting editor is going to be um, available to you under animation, editors and then ghosting editor. As always if you actually press Control shift and you press a button this a uh, little button here will show up in your shelf. So you already have it by default if you want to, but this is specifically for if you have a custom shelf. So I highly recommend you having a, a specific shelf that is your own. In, your, in this case, you should go to animation, uh, editors, and then go into ghosting editor and put it there just to make sure that in your shelf you have this tool. Now when you open it, you get this. Um, very minimal, which is great, but very powerful. So the very first thing that you have to keep in mind is that um, here on the settings, you can actually kind of like ghost by type. So you can see that you can actually uh, ghost geometry. You can also ghost joints or locators. Um, so this is really good because it allows you to actually kind of like ghost nerves curves, so controllers, also joints, skeletons, or also objects. So you can pretty much um, ghost anything that you can animate in Maya, which is really nice. Now, um, this, uh, including hierarchy, uh, leave it on. It's mainly to do with rigs for an animator. If you leave it on, it shouldn't hurt, it's all good. Now, um, create ghost from selection. This is what you're gonna leave most of your time. Now, if I press this button, normally by default it's here, and you get this ghosting um, uh, selection, if I press it, you'll see that you get a little bit of ghost into this animation. 
you see, saw that here it says ghosted objects, which means that this sphere is ghosted. This is a really good feature because if you actually have, for example, three spheres in your scene, maybe you don't want to have all the spheres showcased with ghosting at all times. So this is nice because if you press the I button right here, it means that you can see the ghost or hide the ghost. And this is really nice because you can have three spheres all ghosted up the way you want it, different settings, and it means that you can just go like, I don't want to see the ghost of this sphere right now, I want to see the ghost of this other sphere. So we need options, options are good, and this is an option that I like a lot. So this is basically how you use the eye icon, but in this case, let's check the uh, actual options here on the ghosting. So uh, you can ghost um, either objects just before, so trailing objects, objects before and after, and also objects ahead of your, of your animation. And this is basically like where you are in the timeline. So if I actually select before and after, if I press play, you can see that you have object before and after trailing itself. Now, before we go ahead, I need to actually kind of like showcase to you guys display options. The display options basically mean that you can change the color of how your ghost looks before and after. So as you can see here, my, my ghost before the object, the post frame, it's pink and then pre frame is green. So I can change that to any color that I want. As you can see here, I just made it like in a weird, like, let me see, I'm going to make it a, uh, a green because I can. So now it's green all the time, right? So see, pretty self-explanatory. And then you can also change the opacity of the object. So you can have it either um, basically looking like a proper sphere or pretty much transparent uh, in case it gets um, confusing. We also have far opacity. That is how far the object is. So as you can see now, what's actually more uh, dark, um, it's actually the object that is further away from your main uh, object. Um, or you can actually kind of leave the opacity to be pretty much um, how it was before. Now, I don't like to change this very much. I think the default colors work well, but just in case you have a scene with a different background, good to know. So we don't need that. Let me minimize that. Um, and then we only need a ghosting objects. In this case, it's just one object. So I'm just going to get this to hide and then basically just leave this. This is where we're going to be at. So in this option, you basically get the trailing object. So whatever your object is going, that whatever trail you have, as you can see here, the object is leading and then you have a trail. That's the stuff that you're seeing at all times. Really useful. You can also have the op opposite. So whatever your object is going next, so whatever is ahead, the future of the object per se, uh, you can actually see it right here in the animation and you can have like a sense of where the object is going. Now, I like to leave it on the object here where you can actually see like both before and after. Uh, this is where I like to be at. Now, another good option for you is to actually change how many keys do you want to see before and after. So right now it's on ones, but you can change it on the fly, which is really impressive to either twos or fours or fives or tens. And this is basically just like a, a default value, but you can also customize it to have anything you want. So you can have more or less steps if you want to, or more steps if you want to. Um, this here is basically how many objects do you want to display every time. So basically, if you have it in ones, as you can see here, every time I move it, you have three objects. So one, this is the main object, and then you have one, two, three. This is how many trailing objects you have. So if you go to custom, right, and you still have it in ones, you can add more objects to your trail so you can see more objects either before or after. Really cool to have as well. Now, how do you use this for an actual animation? I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to go back to this trusty, like, don't show my ghosting on this object because it's too much right now. I just go quickly here to my animation and kind of like merge these layers because I'm going to see the raw animation so I can show you guys what I mean. So now we have, let me just, this is uh, not useful. Uh, now we have like just the movement by itself. The reason why this is useful is that whenever you're actually animating an object and you need to know where it's going and where it's coming from, is so you can actually get a good arc on your animation. 
So most of you most likely are used to using motion trails to actually get your arcs going. But I would argue that getting a ghost editor, a ghost trail as you go through so you can see your keys almost like if you were a penciler, almost as if you were a 2D animator. So you can actually have that onion skill and feel gives you a much more true representation of where the object has been and where it's going instead of just having a line that, that kind of like signifies where the curve is still going or where the object is going. So this is why it's so useful. So if I actually get this on twos and then go create ghost of selected, um, maybe once, um, I can actually see that right, right here, not, not a lot is moving, but as soon as I start moving a lot, you can see how useful this is because I can see exactly where my object is going and coming from. And I can see also the spacing and if there's anything weird going on right now that I need to adjust, I can do it right now here and make make sure that it looks really good. Now, for example, let's say that I'm just gonna like delete a few keys so you guys see what I mean. Okay, so let's say that like in this hand here, when it goes from here to here, I want a little bit more extra sauce, right? So I can start kind of like changing my keys so I can actually see what's what I'm going to get next and before. And I don't know if you noticed, but as soon as I twist it, you can see what you're going to get. I'm going to change the colors here a little bit. Actually, you know, the opacity of it all so you can see a little bit better of what I'm saying. So like, see that? You can start to see exactly how useful this is because you get a true representation of what's gonna happen in the next frame. And then as you go through, you can start to see like here, for example, maybe I need a better arc going up and I need to twist it a little bit more. So now you can see almost like the arc of the object as you go through. Like this feels a bit too linear because I deleted a bunch of frames obviously, but now I need to basically get this arm to be a little bit better. Maybe I wanna delete that frame, see what, what I get. Yeah, that's a little bit better. As you can see here, it's starting to look a little bit better, more as more intent going through. I think that the spacing perhaps is a little bit too much. So I want to bring that spacing down a little bit and you can see the spacing here in between these frames. So this is what the car what the where the controller just came from and where it's going. You can see that as soon as I move that spacing to be closer to how it was before, the spacing after changes as well. So it's an amazing tool for you to visually represent exactly what's happening with your timing and spacing of your animation. So I think that, for example, this arc here, here looks a bit weird. So I wanna like change it so I can see that that is a little bit better when I go through right there. And that it's more in keeping with what's coming next. So a really powerful way for you to see where things are going, where they're coming from and have a visual representation of how you can tweak things, for example, if you want to make this spacing for whatever reason more even, which is fine now, um, you can actually like change it and then see, you can now see that it's actually better in between. If I change my camera to actually kind of like get a little bit better of an angle, then you start to see that this is kind of looking all right. We go for the next, 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 next. Same thing here, maybe like the spacing here. I want the spacing to be better between this key and that key for whatever reason. So you go in and you start changing it and then you get like a better angle overall. Same thing here, what's happening in this key. Maybe I want it to be a little bit better like this so I can get that angle to be better, right? So you get a, a true sense of where you're going. And if you don't have enough keys and you want more keys because for some reason three is not enough, as I mentioned before, you can change the amount of keys you have before and after, right? So you can get an even better feel of how that angle is going to look. Look at that. See? When you have more keys. And then you can also use your rotates, which is something that you cannot get 
when you just have a line on your screen, you can actually kind of adjust your rotates so they look a little bit better as you go through your keys. So if your rotates are not 100% there, then you can start getting them there as you go through, like the, what's going on here. Like maybe I want this hand to not rotate in that way until later, right? So I can start doing this as you go through and maybe I want this to be like slightly closer to this spacing. And what's going on there, right? Like, that's kind of weird. So you want to change it and you want to change that as well as you go through. So now it's a little bit more even as you go through this. Same thing here, like right now it's like a little bit too much. So I'm going to make sure that that stuff is actually like on it, right? like this so basically this what it does it gives you a better sense of exactly where you're going and where you come from and you can see the object in a, a world space right you can see the object around so you can see where the rotations are where the translations are as you go through the motion so much better than a motion trail and it gives you much more powerful ways of you to display things. Also, if you do it on an object or on a spline, like I just did, um, it doesn't really slow down your Maya. And for me, it's been a game changer. It's really, really well done. And kudos to Autodesk for putting it together. Now, I hope this was useful. As usual, major thanks to all my Patreons that actually been supporting me, supporting me every single month. If you're interested, go and check it out. Thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring this video, and as usual, stay well, stay safe, peace.